start singing real soon. How about now? Right now. Please stand. Take a look at the person next to you. Take a look at the person next to you. Say, I recognize the God in you. Say, recognize the God in you. Feel the love in the sanctuary. Feel the love in the sanctuary. Lift your voice and repeat after me. We come together. 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 In the name of love, we come together. 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 In the name of love, take a look at the person next to you. Take a look at the person. Say God loves you and I love you too. Say God loves you and I love you too. Feel the love in the sanctuary. Feel the love in the sanctuary. Lift your voice and repeat after me. We come together. 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 Sure, Jesus the Christ is here now, and we are being called to a higher consciousness of love, faith, and infinite possibilities. Let us begin with prayer. Mother, Father, God, we give thanks for your infinite presence. We are constantly reminded that your love, wisdom, and power are always here for us, and yet so much more. Through our ongoing practice of faith, we are spiritually fed, blessed, and prospered. Our hearts and minds remain open, and we pray, study, and grow together. We see our lives transformed as we are surrounded by the infinite potential of your presence. We dwell in your living, loving spirit and affirm your power in ourselves and all others. And so it is. Good morning, and welcome to Unity of Austin. We are an open-hearted, inclusive community who are respectful of the many paths that lead to God and we are fun, loving, caring group who create and manifest with intention. So we are glad you have joined us this morning, and we hope you enjoy the service today. And with that, let's sing. <laughs> Is my essence been within me all along? 
vision, hymn number 109. Please join me in our blessing of all faiths. Our God is love, our race is human, and our religion is oneness. Thank you, and you may be seated. And good morning, <clears throat> Unity of Austin. We know you choose where you spend your Sunday mornings, and we are glad you've chosen to spend it here with us. And if you're attending Unity of Austin for the first time, we would like to recognize you and make sure you receive a welcome gift from Unity of Austin today. And if you raise your hand, someone will bring a welcome gift to you. And if you, um, there we go. We do have new people today. Welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> and if you do not receive uh, a welcome gift right now, um, feel free to visit with one of the ushers after service today and you can receive your gift then. So, <clears throat> we have just a couple of announcements today. Um, first and foremost, it is my pleasure to introduce Leslie Woods. She is returning as our guest speaker today, and we consider her a friend of Unity of Austin. Um, Leslie is a ministerial candidate attending Unity Worldwide Spiritual Institute. And she uh, just completed her fifth term and is now in her sixth term and is enjoying her growth and expansion. Um, Leslie has over 30 years in ministry, both as a volunteer and as a staff member. She is a member of Unity of New Braunfels and currently serves the Unity community by speaking at churches in the Central Texas area. You can find her online at shineonyall.com where she has an online ministry and she conducts classes and workshops. She's also written several books. You can learn more about Leslie in this week's Shine the Light and by going online um, to her ministry at shineonyall.com. So please join me in welcoming Leslie Woods. We're really glad that she's here today. And just a reminder, um, Reverend Carroll hosts a Wednesday evening prayer circle at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live, and it lasts for about 20 minutes, and it's a good way to reflect with Reverend Carroll on a practical spiritual idea and a peaceful meditation. 
So please join her for a midweek prayer and meditation. And reminder, Unity of Austin has a spiritual growth and development class that meets every Sunday morning in the bookstore from 9 a.m., 9.45 a.m. until 10.50 p.m. Let me do that again. <laughs> they, they meet at 9.45 a.m. until 10.50 a.m. just before service. Um, <laughs> this takes place uh, just before Sunday service, and we are reading a book called The Quest, A Journey of Spiritual Rediscovery, and it's written by Richard and Mary Jafala. All are welcome to attend, and based on how the book is written, it's not necessary to have been there from the beginning. Uh, if you're not able to join us, you can still grow with us by getting your own copy of the quest. So, and with that, now is time to meet and greet the Christ within each other. And good morning.
thank you. You, <laughs> you may be seated. Hmm. July 30th, 2023, our daily word is wonder. And today we affirm, I view my life through eyes of wonder. Our message reads, I feel inspired watching a young child discovering new things, eyes wide with awe and wonder. Even the smallest experiences, feeling the tickle of a butterfly on the skin or blowing the seeds of a dandelion are a marvel and a joy. I think of this when disappointing life experiences chip away at my sense of awe and, and appreciation. Today, I let go of disillusionment and open my heart and eyes to once again live in wonder. As I view life, as I view life anew, I renew my belief in the goodness of life and all of people. I open myself to the unexpected treasures happening all around me each day. Wonder is a precious gift, one I use to appreciate the marvels unfolding before me. And from Acts 3.10, they were filled with wonder and amazement at what has happened to him. Now let us prepare for meditation. Hold on just a second, y'all. I just grew a tail because my, this came off. <laughs> okay. Let's recenter again. Take a deep breath in where you are. Feel the pew or your chair supporting your body. Feel your feet firmly on the ground. Think about your feet for a moment. Where they've been, the journeys they've taken you on, the people that they've carried you to help along the way. The strength to walk away when you needed to. How tired they feel when you've been putting in a good long days of work or fun. Notice how they're an extension of our foundation. And when we're walking around, these are the things that connect us to Mother Earth. Now take a deep breath in because I want you to open-eyed look at your hands or feel your hands or both. Think about where they've been. Who they've touched, who they've sent love to. the things that they've made for other people. The 
times they do something we enjoy, a hobby, a craft, fishing, swimming. Think about all the places they've been on the journey with you also. Take the time now to hold your hands about four or five inches apart from each other, palm facing each other. And you'll begin to feel it. There's this energy between the two of them. There's this like fuzzy little connection feeling going on. And if you, if you don't feel it, that's okay because we don't always do just because we don't feel it or don't see it doesn't mean it's not there just as the air that we breathe so to remind us of that take a good deep breath in that sometimes the energy movement that we create that we move with our feet and with our hands connecting to one another sometimes we see it sometimes we don't So this little bit of energy that we have balled up and if you move your hands you can even feel it move with you or breathe in the breath that you know is there because there's an infinite amount of things that we can do with the energy of our being that carry us on the next journey where our hands and feet go. Where our heart space and our mind space go along with it. Take a moment and put your right hand on your chest, on your heart. Put your left hand on your belly. And as your chest rises with each in-breath, feel that connection your head space, your heart space, your breathing space in symmetry, working together. So I invite you just to sit with your hands like this for just a few moments in the silence to just appreciate that. Now I invite you to take your hands and face them upward and outward like we do when we're blessing our offering. And just feel that connectedness with us, with each other, inside this space and the space beyond these walls. To our loved ones watching online, we feel that connection. to the ones that we're not even aware that we're connected to and they're not aware that they're connected to us, we honor that connection. We could take time now to bring our hands together in namaste, prayer, pose. And just take a deep breath in. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes, stretch a little bit, bring yourself back to this space. And we can prepare ourselves together to sing the Lord's Prayer in in our oneness.
This song is called I Won't Waste One More Minute of My Life by Jamie Lula. time to share in our affirmation together. I invite you to stand up. This is the part I usually forget, y'all. I remembered it today. (laughs) Yay, me. So we'll say it three times together. Divine understanding of truth within me sets me free to be uniquely, divinely me. Divine understanding of truth within me sets me free to be uniquely, divinely me. One more time, last time, like we're excited about it. Understanding of truth within me 
sets me free to be uniquely, divinely me. Thank you. That was awesome, y'all. You may be seated. Ah, disclaimer. I'm going to mention some headlines and you might get a little uncomfortable in your seat. This doesn't mean that I'm getting political or telling you how to view your world. I'm sharing a story for me on how some headlines made me uncomfortable and contemplative and made me sit through my week. So I wanted to share that experience with you because when we do things like this, we can grow from things that make us a little uncomfortable. So in the headlines this week, and I usually don't, I usually don't ponder headlines for a long time. Usually I read them. Okay, that happened. Moving on. But for this, this week, for some reason, it just, it just sat heavy with me. Um, just toss the kids back into the river. I had a really hard time with that. Um, Y'all know me. I do youth and family ministry. I'm all about kids and, and the thought of tossing a kid back into a river didn't sit well with me. Um, there's curriculum being written that doesn't tell the true whole story. That doesn't sit well with me either because we don't learn and move and expand beyond this certain level of consciousness until we talk about it, till we address it, till we learn from it. So I pondered that for a while. Um, and then t- double-ended, but I'll tell you the other one later, but I was impacted by two songs this week. One song was uh, Try This in a Small Town, and the song insinuated vaguely, but if you look at it from a point of view, the possibility of violence or repercussions for behaving a certain way in a small town. And with that, and maybe because I'm, I'm taking my credo class right now, and credo is where we, we write down what we believe. Not what somebody else says we should believe, but what we believe. How I expand my ministry from how I am as a minister and how I am to you. Am I living that? Am I being that? Because if I tell you to do something that I believe or suggest, or this might be a good idea, but I don't follow through, it throws me out of balance, and then I get uncomfortable with it. And, and I looked at my, my wrestling with it this week on um, kind of why am I wrestling with it? Why is it sitting so heavy with me? Maybe it is because I'm taking the credo class, and I'm really focusing in on what it is that I do believe. And um, a colleague of mine, a friend of mine, um, mentioned one of the scriptures where Jacob is wrestling with God. And um, Jacob is asking for a blessing, and he's wrestling and wrestling and wrestling and wrestling, and um, gets touched on the hip so much that it affects movement. Kind of, I, I would imagine the story doesn't paint like a novel picture. You use like the Cliff Notes version of it. So he was pinned, hurt, probably couldn't get free, and and so like I want this blessing. But in the wrestling is when the blessing comes forth. And so I'm thinking there must, be, there must be a reason why I'm wrestling with this so much this week. And it caused me to be very introspective in my world, in my life. And it also caused me to wonder. Our daily word is about wonder today. I didn't think these would tie together like this, but they kind of are, are tying together. Um, so I wondered... What if we tried these other kinds of things in any town that we're in? And I began wondering on those things because I was like, why, why, is, why is that need? And one of the things that I'm seeing is that people are leaving the church because outside of church, from time to time, we don't reflect what we say we believe. And it makes, it's uncomfortable to sit in that conviction because then you're looking back, okay, I'm like, okay, I could do better there. I could do better there. I'm doing great here. So give yourself a pat on the back when you're doing it. 
But then I also noticed, because I have a Gen Z kiddo that lives in my house, that um, they're, they're labeled the loneliest generation. They have, they, from the time they were toddlers, they had technology in their hand. The ability to reach out to whoever they wanted to reach out to, and when you ask somebody in their late teens and early 20s, do you feel lonely? Of all the 50 million connections they have on Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, Twitter, all of them, there's still a feeling of disconnect. There's still a feeling of loneliness. And so that kind of set with me also. And another why is because we are an expression of God. And we must outwardly express who we inwardly and what we inwardly know. And so when we are aligned with that truth of who we are and whose we are, and we shine that outward, it changes things, changes the game. Linda Martella Witsit is a unity minister, and she writes from her divine audacity, dare to be the light of the world. The drive to be greater than human thoughts feelings, and experiences is natural to us because we are divine. It's natural for us to wrestle when things feel uncomfortable, like they shouldn't be this way. And it's natural for us to want it to not stay that way. So I'm going to take you through some try this things. And um, I stopped at seven. I could have gone on, and I thought, we don't want to keep them here past lunchtime because we're all going to get hungry, so I will try to succinct it to a comfortable, comfortable time. But the first thing, the first thing is to work on our shadow work. Where have we had trauma? Where has somebody hurt us? Where do we outwardly portray ourselves in a certain way that would cause perpetual angst? Where do we do that? Where have we not healed from something that hurt us? So that we get defensive and push away instead of be able to sit comfortably in or even gather in. And so I look at things that happen in my world, and it's like, have I done the things that I needed to do to be able to forgive somebody who hurt me with boundaries that I don't need to be in the same room with them, but I can love that person and set healthy boundaries in a way that it doesn't interfere with how I treat other people. And I'll be complete, I I said in my Facebook post that I was going to be authentic here. So I experienced some abuse by a relative when I was younger. Have I healed from that enough that I don't hate men? Yes. Have I healed from that enough that I don't wish the person who did this to me complete and total harm? Yes. Yes. Have I healed from it enough that I would rather somebody go through and get rehabilitation and learn to be better than to be stuck in a perpetual of where they were in their darkness? Yes. Do I want to go have dinner with this person? No, I don't. Do I love this person? Yes, because the divinity that's in us is not always what our skin wears. It's not always our skin suit. Because the divinity in us, it doesn't carry to the next plane wherever that is. The ick stays here. And I've said it before, and you all know that I believe that it can be transmuted. It doesn't have to stay ick right? 
So, it's uncomfortable to do that soul-searching stuff. Am I perfect? God, no. But I take the time to evaluate because I want to know that I'm not carrying something around that's going to create a cascade of hurt from the hurt that I got hurt from. So these get lighter. I picked the heavy one first so that we could all just kind of, that one's over. (sighs) Because now we can get on to things that are better. Grace. We can always offer each other a little grace. I know from time to time I get all caught up in it because something didn't seemingly go my way. So I'm like, oh, and so and so, if they hadn't done such and such, then this and this wouldn't have happened. And can I do that less and less? Can I offer grace because I don't know what the other person's going through? And so I want to tell you all a story. Um, I usually share... Well, I'm sharing the good, the bad, and the ugly of, of Facebook feeds this week, y'all. You're welcome. Um, so, so there's a story that came across of a young kid, teenager, who was going do- door to door asking the residents, I, I'm trying to earn money to buy myself a PlayStation, whatever. I don't know what number PlayStation's on, but 4, 5, 29, I don't know. But wanted to buy a PlayStation. And somebody called the cops on this kid. Kid's just trying to buy something that he wants and earn to get it. So the cops show up. Police officer talks to him. The kid was polite to the police officer. Yes, sir, this is what I'm trying to do. And so, you know, the kid was let to go home. And the police officer went back and must have told his buddies at work. And... They all pitched in, and they got this kid the PlayStation. And the officer said, what do you play and what team are you on? I will play with you on your team. Grace. We can be grace. We can try grace in any town that we're in. Vulnerability. Can we be vulnerable with one another? So, another story is um, Father Nathan Monk is a um, author, former father. I can't remember the denomination at the moment, um, but he wrote a response to the song "Try This in a Small Town." And in it, he tells this story because he moved to a small town. And in his small town, he went to a little convenience store. And the little lady behind the counter leaned up to him, kind of the way you do when you're a small town and you want to tell a little something, something, but you don't want everybody to hear. And she said, "Um, by the way, there's a, a person that lives a few houses down. And... And they sometimes wear dress clothes, and they sometimes wear men's clothes, sometimes wear ladies' clothes. I hope you don't have a problem with that. And Father Nathan Monk said, I don't have a problem with that. And her reply is the sweetest thing I think I've ever heard. Well, you better be okay with it. Because they are a nice fella. And a sweet lady. (laughs) To be vulnerable enough to get to know somebody who you may not understand or you may not agree with. You may not have at the beginning. Who knows? I don't know. But she was able to see the beautiful, beautiful being of that person. Because she was vulnerable enough to do so. Try seeing the face of God on everyone. Everyone. And hold the highest good for them. So when I'm sitting there in the wrestling of actions that other people did, did I get mad at them? Yes, I did. Did I... I'll admit it. 
I wish some. I was like, well, then you should just fall in the river too. Like, did I do it? Yeah. Clear and simple, I did. And in my wrestling, I brought myself back to, am I acting out what I say I believe? And my thoughts weren't, and I'm being this transparent with you so that you will know and feel that, for one, ministers aren't perfect. We have the same grumpiness and irritability and frustration with the rest of the world that you guys do. And I decided, and I wondered, what if I held that situation, the people, all of them, on all parts of the issues, and true love and light energy. And if I continued to do so, what would happen? Instead of me wishing harm or you get what, like, I hope karma comes back at you. Instead of me doing that, what if I thought of the other? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that instead in any town. And we can be community in any town. We can get to know so that you can be known so that in our knowing, we begin our growing. I'm going to say that one again because I liked it. I'm like, Leslie, that was a good one. <laughs> we need to get to know so that we can be known, so that our knowing can begin our growing. Because in our community, if we would have conversations instead of building walls, things might look different. We can try using our spiritual practices to recharge instead of to escape. Instead in this small town, and in any town. And I say this because it's really easy to, to come and to meditate to, because we, I do it to feel safe sometimes because I can get in, into oneness with my divinity and with God and spend time with the divine. And I also am very much aware that that doesn't need my, to be my escape to where I only go there to get the the, the good juju, so to speak, that I go there to get the messages from God as to what am I supposed to do with these feet, with these hands, with this heart, with this mind, with the air that I breathe. So, when we come into our safety of meditation, when we come to recharge because our batteries will drain when we go out and do the, all the other instead things, we're going to get tired. And so we need our meditation time. We need our time on Sundays to recharge, or our times in study groups, our books that we read to recharge so that we can go out and shine our lights. Um, And my last one that I love, because I was all in my angst and all in my inner thoughts at the beginning, because things were just like, eh. And Barbie was another headline, but that's not the reason I wore pink. I bought the pink shirt before Barbie happened. <laughs> but it made me reflect on um, being, being us in our authentic self and to be it boldly. And... Um, my sister and I, I chuckle at the way my sister and I played with Barbie dolls because it's really quite hilarious. Um, yes, we interacted and played social whatevers with the Barbies, but our favorite thing, favorite thing to do with the Barbies is we would blow up the furniture, because we had blow-up furniture back in the 70s, 
And then we would see who could squish it the fastest down the flat. <laughs> and that was how we played with Barbies. And, and it was fun, and it was authentic. I didn't have to play with my toys the way other kids play with their toys. But I didn't want to. Because we had fun playing a different way. And headlines this week, and I, I, probably, I, I didn't think in my lifetime I would ever, ever come across this in a Facebook feed. But y'all are going to want to get your phones out, and you're going to want to Google, and you're going to go scan your Facebook because this happened. Number one on iTunes in the Christian genre is a drag queen named Flamey Grant. And if y'all don't know, that's a play on words to Amy Grant, well-known contemporary Christian artist. She's number one with a song called Good Day. And y'all, it's a good, good song. In my early 20s, I played and led contemporary Christian worship. I did it a lot. I had good calluses on this hand. They're not there anymore. And she's caught a lot of flack. We knew she would. But she did it. And she's getting support from people like Plum. Plum was another artist I listened to a lot. And the song was amazing. And she is boldly, boldly, boldly put herself out there. Yes, she's getting the hate posts. Yes, she's getting the, mm, even the apocalypse is fixing to happen because of her, somebody says. And for me, if the apocalypse looks like a child of God being able to praise God no matter what you look like, no matter who you are, yeah, I'd like to see that change. If the world as we know it changes into something like that, yeah, I want to see some more of that. I do. And the other scripture that was rolling around in my head, because I believe that when... Jesus said to his followers in Matthew 25, 40. The surprised followers asked, when they did these things for him, and then Jesus replies, the king will answer them. Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these of my brothers and sisters, you did it to me. And this translation, and I'm not sure with other translations, but this one may imply that the king wasn't Jesus, the king was God. Which, if what we say we believe, that each of us is a divine expression of the God, then truly what he says, what you do to each other, you do to me. And I don't think that's a coincidence. I don't think that's the coincidence of that particular verse showing us that our divinity within is a real thing. And in the Genesis scripture, it refers to, at the end, the closure part, that God and humans overcome. Now, I don't know about you, but I wasn't under the impression that God needed to come over and overcome anything. But when God expresses as us, through us, then there's some overcoming. So, may you have the courage to wrestle and to contemplate so that brings forth blessings of authentic and bold love, light, peace, and joy. Shine on, y'all, and namaste.
Wow. Thank you, Leslie. You're welcome. And that's why she's a friend of unity. <laughs> wow. So I will certainly be trying this in every town. So thank you. And now we get to celebrate our abundance. And I invite the ushers to come forward. And with joy and gratitude, we acknowledge God is our source. And we are constantly receiving ongoing blessings that prosper us. As we are prospered, we go forth and prosper others. So God's good is always taking place, and it happens through us and by us. So thank you, God. The song is called Respect 2.0. You know, I had to give props to the original Respect, which was by Aretha. But I actually wrote this with my friend Andrew Tinker, and it's on my second album. And so if you don't have my albums, I do have one flash drive with me with both albums on there. And if you are the lucky person that approaches me after service today, I will give it to you for a love offering or for free. But this song, I, I was listening to Leslie's talk, and um, it, it, it's, it's basically your talk, so... <laughs> starts with me so I will look inside and then I'll be the change that I see happening on the outside then I can honor you my sisters and my brothers Step up to the man when we all unite. Hold my hand, we'll take a stand. Let freedom come without a fight. Joy is your birthright. Loving is your destiny. What you give is what you get. Give a little respect. Respect. If what you give is what you get, give a little respect. Respect. If what you give is what you get. 
what you get, give a little respect. Oh. It starts with us, so join the human race.
protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Thank you. Have See you next week.